Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you around the workspace of Adobe Illustrator. We'll be opening up a new document, having a look at the tools and having a look at the panels and getting used to the space. We'll also have a bit of a play with creating some shapes and adding a little bit of color. First off, when you open up a new document, so you've opened up Adobe Illustrator and you've gone to a new document, you will get this panel opening that will help you decide what size you want your document to be. So you'll see here, I have some recent ones that I've been working on. There's also a few different tabs here that we can have a look under. So we've got mobile. So this Adobe already has preset the pixel size of a whole bunch of different screens. They also have that for web. So you might want to look through depending on what size you want to work with. We've got print, film and video, and art and illustration. So we're going to start with print today. And I just wanted to show you this first. So there's letter, legal, um, and tabloid. These are sizes that we don't really use so much in Australia. We more stick to the A sizes. We're going to create an A4 document today. So I could select this one and go create, but there's a few other things that I'd like to show you before we move on. The first is this. So this is as a point size. I'd like to change this to millimeters because that's what we're going to be working with. There are other options under here. So we've got points, pikers, inches, millimeters, centimeters, and pixels. Just a little bit of a rough guide. We'd be tending to work with pixels if we're looking at screens or web. Centimeters is one that I tend to use for signage or really big projects. Millimeters is the standard one that I use and there are some other options here. So under here you'll notice we've got 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. Now I can type into those boxes and change that size if I wanted something different. I can also change the orientation here. At the moment I've got it set as a portrait but I might change it to landscape. And we also have this option for artboards. So the way I like to think of artboards is to think of it as you have a table and your artboard is your piece of paper that you're working on. And you could have several pieces of paper that you're working on at a time. But we're going to start with just one artboard today. Before we open this up, we're also going to name it because that's always a really good thing to do. So I'm going to type in lesson one and my name. Now we're not going to go into bleed and color mode today. We'll go into that in another lesson. So now that we have our size and orientation and artboard and name, I'm going to click create. Fantastic. So you can see here I have my piece of paper or my, my artboard as we call it. It's sitting on the pasteboard or if you'd like to imagine it as a table, this gray part here. And we're going to have a first a look at the tools. These are the tools over here on the left hand side. Now on your screen, they may be in a single line on mine, they're in two, and that will come down to how you like to have a preference of your tools. I like to have mine side by side and some people like to have them in a long strip. I'll be going over all of these tools as we go through the tutorials, but today we're going to be looking at the selection tool and you'll notice as I hover over it that you can see the name of the tool. We're going to have a look at the rectangle tool. This is also what I like to call the shape tool because underneath this tool, there are several other shapes that we can work with. And we'll also have a look at zooming in and out. Now below our tools, we have uh, a way to change color. Now something which is really important about Adobe Illustrator is we create vectors within Adobe Illustrator and vectors always have a fill and a stroke. The fill is the inside and the stroke is the line around the outside. And at the moment, if I created a vector, it would have a white fill or white inside and a black stroke or a black uh, line around the outside. So we can manipulate that from our tool menu. We can, we're currently on a color mode. We can also go to a gradient mode or none means that it has no fill or no stroke, which is something we'll go into more later. Underneath here, we also have a few other options. We can draw normal. That's just our normal way of drawing. We can draw behind, which if you have this selected, it'll draw behind the shapes, or we can draw inside or draw within a shape. We can also change our screen mode and we can edit the toolbar. So this is our toolbar, which we tend to keep over here on this side. Up the top, we also have some other options. These change 
uh, depending on what we're working on. So if I opened up some text, it might come up with the font and the point size of the font. If I was working with a shape, we might see some other colors up here and some swatches. So this can be a really handy toolbar as well to use. Now over onto the right side, we have our panels. So at the moment I have this set as Essentials Classic. I'm just going to reset that now so you can see how it would look if you opened it uh, at the beginning. So within Essentials Classic we have some quite standard and useful panels. It's what Adobe has decided that you might mostly want to use when you're working within Adobe. There are other options here as well and you can see here depending on what type of work you're doing you may want to select web, typography, painting, layout, we're going to stick with Essentials Classic today and in a future tutorial I will show you how to create your own custom one. You can see here I've got Vex to Ill. This is the one that I use when I'm illustrating. It has the panels that I most use and I can set them so whenever I select Vex to Ill it will come up with the panels that I want. But we're going to stick with Essentials Classic today. And I'm just going to pop this menu out so you can kind of have a bit of a look. I'm going to talk further about the way that panels work but just as a rough guide we have ones for selecting color so color color guide swatches you have things like brushes they're a way of adding texture or other thicknesses or weights to your lines that you're creating we have stroke that adds thickness to a line gradients transparency appearance graphic styles layers is another really important one that's about organizing our space as is the artboard panel you can think of artboards, as I said, as a piece of paper sitting on your table on the pasteboard and you can have several so we can create more artboards through our artboard panel. So what I'd like to show you is how to make a shape. We're going to go over here. So this is our shape tool here. We're going to start by clicking on this rectangle. Now, depending on if this is the first time you've opened this program or not, you may have a different shape that's showing there. The way you can have a look at the different shapes underneath is by clicking and holding down. And so we have a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star and flare. I'd like you to select the rectangle tool just to start with. And we can see that we're going to start with a fill of white and a stroke of black. And I'm going to click and drag. Now I'm still holding down my cursor at the moment and I haven't let go yet and you can see here that Adobe is giving me a preview in this blue line of what my shape is going to look like. I'm going to let go and you can see here now my shape has been created. Going back to my selection tool I'm going to select off so the blue line has disappeared and you can see here now I've made a, re a rectangle, this kind of squarish rectangle. It has a white fill which means it's solid. It's a bit hard to see because it's on a white background but it does have a white fill and it has a black line around the outside. That's our stroke. Okay so now that I've created that and I have my selection tool which is this one here I can actually pick that up and I can move it. So I'm clicking and I'm dragging it and I can move it around my space. So have a go at that. I'm going to show you again. I've gone to my rectangle tool. I've clicked and dragged. I've gone to my selection tool and I can pick it up and move it around my space. With that selection tool I can also change the size. So you can see it's selected here and it comes up with these white squares in the corners. When I roll over those I get this double ended arrow and I can click and drag, click and drag, click and drag and I can change the shape that my rectangle is. Now if I wanted to create another shape, I could go over here and hold down the shape tool and select a different one. This time I'd like you to select the ellipse tool. Again, we're going to click and drag out an ellipse, click and drag and go back to our selection tool and we can move them around our space. So we can move our rectangles, we can change the size, Let's squash that one down smush it up a bit, make it smaller and we can have a bit of a play around with these shapes. So that's one way of creating shapes. We've just started with creating rectangles and ellipse um, and there are other shapes within there that we'll have a look at. But I wanted to show you that there's another way of using that same tool. So the first way is to click and hold down with your cursor and drag. 
The second way is to have the shape selected and just tap once, click once on your artboard and you'll notice up comes a little menu. Now what's really handy about this is you can actually set the exact size of the shape that you want to create. So if I knew that I wanted to create a 75 millimeter circle, I could type in my millimeters in here and click OK and Adobe will create an exact 75 by 75 millimeter shape for me. Now I'll do that with the rectangle. So I have my rectangle selected. I'm going to click once on my artboard and you'll notice here I have my little um, panel that's come up, menu that's come up and I can type in here, let's say I want this to be 20 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters in height and I'll click OK and Adobe has created that shape for me. So now we've tried two different ways of creating shapes. We've clicked and dragged in the top here and we've just clicked once and typed in the size that we want for the second. So have a bit of a play with creating some ellipses and rectangles using those two options. The next one that I would like to show you is the polygon tool. Now again, we can click and drag. That's one way. We can just click once and we can type in the radius and we can also type in how many sides we want. I don't want it to be a hexagon, I want it to be an octagon. So I'm going to type in eight and I want the radius to be 40 and okay. So we've just created a polygon in two separate ways, clicking and dragging and by clicking once and typing in what our desired size and shape is. This goes the same for the star tool. So we'll hold down our shape again and go to the star tool. Again, we can click and drag. We have a star. We can click once and we can type in the radius one and radius two and the points. So this is how many points the star has. Now the radius one and the radius two means the inside radius of, this, of the star. And then the second radius is from the, in, the sort of outside of the star there to the point. So let's have a bit of a play with that. Let's make this one 20 millimeters and this one can be 50 millimeters and let's give it 11 points. Why not have a bit of a look at what that makes. Now the interesting thing, once you have set this with the star, if I go to create another star and I click and drag, it's gonna keep the same amount of points. So you can see that there. Okay, so we've been creating a few different shapes. Now I haven't really showed you the rounded rectangle or the flare tool. That's because I probably don't use them quite as much, but please feel free to have a bit of a play with those and see how you can create those. I'm going to go back to my selection tool now and I'm just going to move some of these over here. These shapes, they're still there. I can still use them, but they're just not sitting on my artboard. I'm just sitting them over on my pasteboard. You can imagine them like little bits of paper that you've cut out and you're just putting them off onto the side for a minute while you're having a think about your space. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just, I might just leave just these two stars here. Now there's more I'm gonna show you with shapes, but just because we've, we've got some shapes now, we might start adding a little bit of color. The way that I'd like to show you how we add color is with swatches. Using my selection tool, I have a star selected. Now, as we spoke about before, it has a fill of white and it has a stroke of black. Now with the fill selected, so I know that's selected because it's sitting on top, I'm going to choose a color. Let's choose red. Now you can see that my star has changed from a white fill to a red fill, but it still has the black stroke on the outside. Now if I'd like to change that stroke, I can go here and I can select the stroke. Now I know it's active because it's sitting in front and I might change it to yellow. And if I select off onto my pasteboard, you can see I have a star. It's a bit hard to see actually, but I do have a star with a red inside and a yellow stroke on it. I'm now gonna select this one. So I'll click with my selection tool, select it. If I go back over here, you'll see in my swatches panel that it has a white fill and a black stroke. Something else I might just say is if you don't have your swatches open, you can find them under window and swatches. That's how you open up that panel. So this time I'm going to give it a green stroke and let's say on the inside, so I select the fill, I'm going to give it a pink fill 
So I've just added a couple of colors there to the fill and a couple of colors to the stroke. Now there's a few different ways to zoom in, but we're going to have a look at this tool over here. If I hover over it, you can see it's called the zoom tool. And there's also next to it, you'll see in brackets a Z, which is our keyboard shortcut. So I can either go over to my tools panel or I can hit Z on my keyboard. So you'll see here I have a little magnifier tool. So this is my zoom tool and it has a plus in it. That means if I click once, it's going to zoom in. So I'm just clicking, clicking. So that's one way you can just click. If I'd like to zoom out, I need to hold down option on my keyboard. Now that's slightly different on a PC. Hold it down on my keyboard. You can see that my magnifying glass turns into a minus. That means I'm going and zooming out. Zooming in and zooming out is to select your zoom tool and just click and then to hold down option and to click. If I click and drag to the left hand corner, it zooms out. If I click and drag to the right hand corner, it zooms in. So have a bit of a play with your zoom tool now and get used to it. If you get a little bit lost and you don't know where you are, just down here, it's a bit hard to see where I've got the recording, but in the left hand bottom corner, if you select this menu, you can go back to fit on screen and it will just zoom back to your pasteboard. Okay, so we've got a couple of shapes going on there. Um, we're also going to grab some of these and you can give some colors to your other ones that you have created. So have a bit of a play with that. I'll just add a bit of color to these ones at the moment, but spend a bit of time having a look around your space. Show you how you can create shapes in another way. So using your polygon and star tool, this is what this works with. I may as well pick the polygon tool. So if you want to create a triangle one way to do that is using your polygon tool now before we did the click and drag method so do one of those we also did the click and drop which gives us this little panel and we could type in here we want it to be 30 radius and we want we want three sides because that's a triangle and click ok that gives us a triangle the other thing that's quite fun is if you click and drag and you're still holding down with your mouse you can use the up and down key on your keyboard and you can see here that's adding and subtracting sides. So have a bit of a go at that. What I did was I clicked and dragged. I'm still holding down and I used my up key and my down key to change how many sides I had. I'm just going to move those off the side for a minute. And I'm going to now select my star tool and just you can see how that works as well. So I'm clicking and dragging and I'm using my up arrow now putting more and more points in and using my down arrow. So go right back. There we go. So have a bit of a play with that. That's just another handy tip for if you're using the polygon tool or the star tool for creating some shapes. So we've had a look at our selection tool. We were able to resize. So clicking and dragging there. We are able to move shapes around. We've had a go at making some different shapes. Again, you can hold down that tool and see the different shapes that are underneath and you can make different shapes there. We've had a look at our zoom tool and we've had a look at adding some fill and some stroke by using our swatches panel. The next thing that I would like to show you is how to constrain your proportions. Now, what does that mean? It's something that's really, really useful when we're working in Adobe Illustrator. And it means if I'm creating a circle, it will create a perfect circle. If I'm creating a rectangle, I can create a perfect square. So I'm going to show you that now. Selecting my ellipse tool this time, and I might just change colors just for fun. I'm going to make a, a pink fill and a green stroke. And I'm going to click and drag, but this time I'm going to hold down my shift key. And what my shift key does is you can see here, even though I'm moving in and out with my shape tool, it's still always a perfect circle. When I let go, I have a perfect circle. Let's have a go with that with our rectangle tool. Here it is, rectangle. Again, I'm clicking and dragging and I get a perfect square. It's very, very handy. So have a little go at making some perfect circles and some perfect squares by holding down shift as you click and drag. 
The other thing that's quite handy with Shift, and it will come up a lot as we're using this program, is with our selection tool, we had a little go at making um, shapes bigger and smaller. If we hold down Shift as we make shapes bigger and smaller, it will always keep the properties constrained. So let me just show you the difference here. Actually, I'll show you on this one. So I'm just going to spin this around. Now, if I don't hold down Shift and I start moving it, see how it warps it out of shape? And that might not be what I want, especially with images. You want them to be nice and consistent. So holding down Shift, I can change the size of this shape without changing the proportions. With the selection tool, there was something I snuck in there that you might have seen, is how to rotate. So we've had a look, if we hover over these corners, we can change the size. If you hover just outside, you'll notice these arrows, it's sort of a bendy arrow with arrows on either side. If you have that one and you click and you drag, you can spin your shape around. So have a bit of a go with that as well, spinning your shapes. So you've got to sort of wait till you're hovering over that corner and the tool comes up. So this is resize and this is rotate. So there's a bit of a difference there. So that's resize and this is rotate. Now one of the things that's quite fun there as well, I'm just stepping backwards, is if you hold down shift as you rotate, it will only rotate in 45 degree angles. So have a bit of a play with that. I kind of think of shift as being a bit of a, a magical button within Illustrator and I use it all the time. So have a bit of a play with it. Thank you for watching this new tutorial which just introduces you how to open up a document, create some shapes, add some colours, resize and rotate and zoom in and out. And I look forward to sharing the next set of instructions with you. Bye.